Hey guys and welcome to today's video where we are finally doing another tank review. I know it has been a while but if you want to see the previous episodes I do have a playlist and I'll link that below. Also if you didn't know we recently launched Leopard Gecko Care Guides with Retrieve. These are interactive guides where you can easily and quickly search through the videos and find the information you need. It's also transcribed and translated. Uh, we have the Ultimate Beginner's Guide to leopard geckos as well as a feeding and supplementing guide together they contain almost three hours worth of content so if this is something that would interest you go over to leopardgecko.retrieve.com store and check out the guides today Anyway, back to the setup. So the first tank comes from Tyler, who is a five-year-old gecko called Ziggy. And Ziggy lives in a 30-gallon tank that Tyler's dad made from scratch. Now, he wanted to go bioactive, but the only bioactive substrate he could use in the US was a bio dude, but he wasn't very happy with how it looked and felt it wasn't quite safe. So asked if I had any suggestions for bioactive substrates available in the US. Now, I know some people who own leopard geckos in the US uh, tend to use play sand and topsoil. They like to disinfect it and sieve it so there aren't any big chunks in it. Um, and that seems to work in an arid bioactive tank. So you could try that and it might actually be cheaper. Uh, Tyler also asked whether I still put on my leopard gecko UV for two hours in the morning and evening. I don't, I actually put it on for 10 to 12 hours a day. And if you'd like to learn more about what I use, my lighting, the supplementing schedule, um, check out this video I did a little while ago. Next, we have a setup from Jonathan, who's planning on buying an 80 gallon Zen habitat enclosure and sent me this mock-up to show what he intends on doing and kind of wanted some advice. So since it's gonna be such a large enclosure, I would recommend lots of hides. I have a similar advice for Katie and Ava who sent in their setups as well. I think we do like to keep things nice and simple, but I have found that leopard geckos do well in quite cluttered environments. So Clay's enclosure for their gecko, Atlas, is a good example. Um, so don't, you know, you can use lots of cork and driftwood and slates, especially under that deep heat projector. You want a slate hide to really get the most out of it. Um, now obviously this is just a mock-up and I'm just adding extra things in as an example, but just make sure there's plenty of room to hide. Don't be afraid to fill it with lots of stuff and remember to have hides both sides of the tank. Also something to keep in mind, with the Zen habitats, a lot of the UV gets blocked by the mesh. It's not great mesh. Um, so you want to install the UV lamp on the inside of the tank. Otherwise, your gecko is probably not gonna get a lot. Um, and keep it on the same side as the deep heat projector. Next, we have a crested gecko set up from Charlie and they basically wanted some advice because they didn't know how to add more decor to fill in this area and I must agree, you know, this does look quite empty. And when you're using fake plants and stuff like that, it can be more difficult to fill up those areas. Um, so what I would suggest is obviously add a coconut at the top, that always works well. But also you could add some cork branches and if you wanted to continue with fake plants you can hang some of the fake plants over those branches so not only can the gecko climb up the branches but they can also hide behind the plants and you can get suction cup plants to put on the side of the tank. Now personally I do prefer bioactive tanks out for crested geckos and I think you can do a lot more with them so I thought I'd show you also some wonderful setups we were also sent so this one is from Kian and this is a gargoyle gecko tank but it'd work well for a crested gecko um, and also there was this chihua tank from Thomas so you can see kind of how much a tank gets filled in a lot more with real plants there's not that many fake plants on the market that really fill in that vertical space um, but if you are still working with fake plants you can get some cork branches put some plants over that but particularly in Thomas's uh, tank here I just want to say I love how the plants and moss grow up the back how do people keep moss alive in these tanks because they always dry out way too quick in mine 
The next setup comes from Scarlet. Now she's concerned that her tank is too boring as her gecko doesn't use most of it. So she asked if I had any pointers. Now I must admit when I read the description, I was expecting a bare empty tank. But as you can see, it's a lot different. There are so many places for your gecko to hide and explore. So what I would suggest is seeing if you can spy on your gecko at night because I have a feeling your gecko is actually moving about. Um, also another thing you could try is instead of all the little plastic hides you could just try making hides out of more natural materials so um, not only will these have different smells on them but they also have different textures and this may be more enticing because I found this with crested geckos and fake plants so I found my crested gecko wouldn't move as much around the tank when it just had plastic plants I guess they know they're not plants as soon as she had real plants she was moving more and she was interacting with them differently so I wonder if you use more natural materials in the leopard gecko tank and not just have one hide here one hide here one hide, but just a selection of things where the gecko can find places to hide within them if that makes sense then they may explore more they might find it more enticing Next we have a setup from Amber. Now she'll be upgrading to a 20 gallon tank once Apollo gets bigger. I would say if Apollo is like 10 to 12 grams, he, she can probably move into a bigger tank already. I know people can start off with a 10 gallon tank, but if you are new to leopard geckos and you're wondering which tank to get, I would just go straight for a 20 gallon because they will outgrow a 10 one very quickly. I'd also recommend um, adding some substrate in the next tank. Now, vinyl flooring is okay as long as it's not self-adhesive, but it's very similar to just having a bare bottom tank. Like if you just have a wooden vivarium or a glass tank and you have that solid floor, that's kind of what the vinyl flooring does. Like it doesn't add anything to the gecko's life. There's no real texture or enrichment there. It's absolutely fine to use, as I said, as long as it's not self-adhesive, but for a gecko, it could be quite boring. So if you want to, once you do your upgrade, I would recommend having some loose substrate. If you don't want it all over the tank, that's fine. Just have little digging areas, but that could be cool. Also, I need to ask, what is that in the water? <laughs> you have to let me know below. Similar to this, we also had a tank transformation. Now, this is from Ava, and she started with a 10-gallon tank, like Amber, but now she's upgraded to a 34 gallon tank and as you can see she's used this space really well there's a light and temperature gradient and lots of hides so this is very cool to see then we have a tank build from joseph for a crested gecko and he sent me various stages of the build but it came out so well it looks so cool i particularly love these upright branches because not only are they the climbing frame but also as the plants grow around them they all become hiding places so very similar to what i was suggesting in a fake planted tank this is something you could do with a real plant or a fake plant but it will be a really cool place for your gecko to hide i also love that the gecko is hiding on the window in that hide that's very cool next we have this really cool leopard gecko build from cody full of plants apparently it is a nightmare to keep them alive but it looks so good that i just wanted to feature it here then Emily sent in her before and after Crested Gecko setup. So this is what it looked like before and this is what it looked like after. It looks so nice. And the only reason I just want to quickly point something out in this is because when I was reading the description, she says that she's using a 12% UVB lamp for her Crested Gecko. And for Crested Geckos, say in an Exoterra, a 2.4% UVB lamp should be enough. And for tanks with darker mesh or, you know, uh, you know all mesh blocks some uv but um dark mesh and like i said zen habitats can block a lot of uv then you want maybe a seven percent um so i'm thinking 12 percent might be a bit too intense for a crested gecko so i thought i'd just point that out here but overall very nice and finally we have this very interesting very different setup from kelly so the reason i thought this would be a good example to show is because it's something i wanted to quickly discuss so if you're using deep substrate you don't want to use a heat mat i know kelly is using an overhead heating uh situation so that is great but i have recently had a few people ask me why the tanks aren't getting hot 
when they've got like two or three inches of substrate over a heat mat. If you read the instructions of your heat mat, it will tell you not to put very deep substrate over it because the heat can't get through. But if you did want something similar to Kelly, then make sure you're using, you know, a surround heat emitter, deep heat projector, something like that, an overhead heating lamp. Now, Kelly did have a few questions regarding this setup. He said some of the worms had escaped um, and become beetles and wondered whether uh, they could harm the gecko, as well as not seeing many isopods that he'd added. Well, the good news is that the beetles are safe, and I actually use superworm or Mario worm beetles as part of the cleanup crew in my leopard gecko's tanks, so that's great. Um, one downside is they may start breeding in the tanks. You might end up with free roaming food, which your gecko might love, but... Um, <laughs> might be a bit of a pain but the beetles are perfectly fine and also I did add isopods into Diego's tank but they also disappeared so uh, maybe the beetles are the better choice for a cleanup crew for the leopard gecko but yeah thank you to everyone who sent in their setups we had over 250 entries and i only go through them myself so as you can imagine i couldn't get through them all but maybe i'll go through some more in a future video so don't worry if you have entered some in i may look again uh also some tanks were just really cool there was no issues no comments for them so i thought i'd display them here for you to enjoy also sometimes people just send me a screenshot of their instagram and the picture just too small to include um, and really for this video, I prefer it when people like have specific questions, they want like answers. Sometimes people sent in the really cool setups and there was a list of things they used but there was no question so I wasn't sure what they wanted from it. But overall, you know, I guess it's a good thing that I'm seeing less and less really bad setups and actually some absolutely amazing ones. So that is a big positive to doing this. But yeah, um, if you haven't subscribed already, please do and check out my new guides. But thank you for watching, guys, and goodbye. <laughs>